Hi, my name is Deborah Goffner. I'm a research director for in plant biology for working for the CNRS. And the CNRS is the French National Agency for Fundamental Research. And today I'd like to talk to you about a project that my colleagues and I are working on. The project is called the Great Green Wall for the Sahara and the Sahel Initiative. The Great Green Wall project is a pan-African reforestation project to combat de desertification. And desertification can be defined as land degradation in arid, semi-arid, and dry subhumid areas resulting from various factors like climatic variations and human activities. So let's take the Sahel, for example. Um, when we talk about climatic variations, we talk about increasing temperature and also insufficient and sporadic rainfall, whether it be among, within the seasons, this is the rainy season, this is the dry season, or interannually. This rainfall is highly unpredictable. When we talk about human pressures, we mainly talk in the Sahel about overgrazing of pasture lands, but there are other factors, and that might include bushfires. The Green Wall Project is first and foremost a political process. And in 2005, it all started out with the former Nigerian president, Abasanjo, um, he came out with the idea in front of the African heads of state, what if we built a Green Wall for the Sahara? Um, two years later, the Green Wall project was actually adopted by the 11 member countries. And at that time, the former Senegalese president, Abdoulaye Wad, was nominated as the coordinator of the project. In 2010, the Pan-African Green Wall Agency was created, and the agency um, takes care of all the administrative and all the technical aspects on the ground of the project. And today, in 2013, Senegal is the leading country in terms of reforestation activities in the project. The Green Wall project is extraordinary just by its scope. The dream project, the dream, this is how the, the Green Wall should look at the end. Um, it's a, uh, it's, there is, um, trees will be planted across the continent, in the east from Senegal to the west in Djibouti. This means that the Green Wall will be 7,000 kilometers long and 15 kilometers wide. And there are 11 countries that are um, also involved in the project along its path. Very often, the Green Wall project is, is depicted like with this um, kind of a wall of trees. But in fact, it's not really a wall of trees. And what I want to show you here is the region that we're working on in northern Senegal in the furlough region. Um, and this is, these are three villages. We do Tessikehe and Labgar. And you can see these green patches here. These are the patches that are actually have been planted. So you have to look at the green wall, not so much as a wall of trees, but as uh, restoring ecosystems in a more patchwork form. The green wall project is more than just planting trees. There are also several parallel activities. And one activity is the establishment of um, fruit and vegetable gardens around the villages that are run by women. And the women cultivate these gardens, and then they bring the food home, or they sell them in local markets. And the advantage of this is um, increasing income for households. It's also um, increasing women's empowerment. And it's also just diversifying the daily diet of local people. So, if you consider the global objective of the Green Wall Project as combat against desertification, there are also some more specific, more tangible uh, environmental and social, social and economic goals. Some of the um, environmental goals include increasing forest cover in keeping with the local the needs of local people. It's also restoring soil health and reducing soil erosion. One very important issue is to restore and, and conserve a plant and animal bio, biodiversity. Also, since water resources are limiting, we have to use water resources more efficiently. In terms of uh, economic goals, anything to do with development and diversification of agriculture and livestock systems are definitely um, important. And in terms of the social goal, that is to improve well-being of local populations and, of course, to alleviate poverty. So these are kind of the dream goals. And now, but how do we actually go about determining what the real impact of the, the Green Wall project is? 
and how can we make it so that these goals are really attainable. So this is where scientific research comes in. And in 2009, the CNRS created a research space to study the green wall process. And these are called human environment observatories. And what the observatory does is funds a series of small scale um, research projects around the green wall in all different fields. So it's an interdisciplinary approach. So the projects are involved in plant, animal, and microbial biology, health sciences, social sciences, and earth sciences. And the advantage also is that we're all studying um, the green wall process in Senegal where the plantation is actually occurring. Um, and we can actually merge all of our data together to get some kind of full picture. But obviously the CNRS observatory is just one cog in a more complex structure. Um, a complex structure that's very conducive to action research. So who, what are the other components of this structure? Well, we're working very closely with our colleagues, uh, professors, and um, doctoral students at the UCAD, which is the University of Dakar in Senegal. We also work very closely with the Senegalese National Agency for the Green Wall Project. They're the ones that are really doing the tree planting and all the technical aspects. And we're working very closely with civil society and local populations. So this way that if some research inputs are available, they can be directly um, used in the field, and this is a path that's very extremely direct. If, for example, in the field there is some problem that the agency um, sees, uh, we can define a research project that would actually help solve the problem. And of course, civil society is also very important. So I think that the Green Wall is really an extraordinary chance for the uh, African continent to join together, to join forces, and to try to um, address these social and ecological challenges associated with climate change. So what would be some keys to success? One might be to um, densify this type of structure um, that includes all of the different stakeholders, research, education, um, government, and civil society, and they should be multiplied. Another important thing to consider is that the Green Wall should not be just um, a fast-track tree planting uh, process. We need slower track uh, research-based implementation of projects in order to uh, be the most efficient possible um, in the planting activities. And with that, thanks. <laughs>